let's talk. Uh, so we have uh, teed up on the agenda today, and I'm just catching up from my own vacation. Hackfest planning. We have a process update on the annual election for the TSC um, spots and um, and uh, project reporting. I, I don't. Again, I'm totally catching up, Todd. So was there any thread this week, or is this just a reminder that we'd like to have people? Yeah, really just a reminder. So I know Tracy sent out a thread uh, about a week and a half ago. Uh, it was briefly discussed on the TSC call last week, and the action was for uh, folks in the technical community, uh, as well as the TSC, to provide any feedback on that through email. Uh, we didn't see anything come through over the last week, so really just a reminder for folks to have a read through that, have a think, and uh, provide any feedback. So hopefully next week we can bring a more fully baked proposal back to the group. Okay. And then there's a proposal for Fabric Explorer. There's actually a Blockchain Explorer project already. Um, I think at this point, and especially since we don't have quorum, we should just maybe go through the proposal, have it presented by the uh, proposers, and then um, uh, we can talk about how we want to handle this um, going forward. So uh, is there anything else that anyone has for the agenda that we're missing? Okay, <clears throat> then Todd, I would suggest we get ahead, uh, go ahead with the planning. All right, sounds good. Uh, so we're looking like uh, September 21st and 22nd in Chicago for the next HackFest. Uh, we're just in final discussions with the potential hosts there. Uh, so hoping to have an answer in the next couple days uh, so we can get registration booted up for that and folks can book travel. Uh, don't book anything yet. This is still tentative, but it is looking uh, fairly likely that will work out. And then the second thing just related to Europe, uh, I'm gonna drop the doodle poll into the chat window. Uh, if you are planning to attend the European Hackfest, let us know your preferred availability for that so we can hone in on dates and uh, find a location for that. And that will probably be the last uh, Hackfest for the year looking at October, November timeframe. Any questions on either of those before we move on to the elections? All right. All right. So in terms of elections, I'm um, dropping a Google Doc into the chat window. Uh, this is very similar to what we saw last year. Let me just talk quickly, uh, high level timeline. And then I know Tracy has a few uh, comments to add as well. Um, so very similar to last year. Um, the the 11 TSC members were announced on August 25th of last year. So they're, the term will conclude on August 24th. Uh, so this is all detailed out in the charter. Uh, uh, essentially, the contributors and maintainers are eligible to nominate themselves to ultimately then get elected uh, onto the TSC, which has the 11 seats. So the plan for this um, is a really standard timeline and process, but essentially we'll kick off the nomination process uh, just after the TSC call on August 10th. Keep that open for one week. Uh, we will compile all the nominations into a PDF, uh, send that out to all of the uh, contributors to ultimately vote. Voting will remain open for a period of one week, and then we will announce that in the TSC call uh, on the 24th. From there, of those 11 TSC members, we will hold an election for chair. Uh, again, one week nomination period, one week election process. September 7th, we will uh, announce the chair. Um, and for all of these, everyone uh, that is currently on the TSC or TSC chair are uh, eligible to run in this. So from that, uh, very similar to last year, we have a Google Doc of the lists of contributors and maintainers that are eligible to run in this. Um, so uh, last year is a bit more of a manual process. This year, Tracy has done some great work uh, being able to script some of this uh, to make it a little more automated and easy. But we do want folks over you know, the next couple weeks to review this list if you are not on there and believe you should be please reach out to both uh, Tracy and me uh, and so that we can ensure that you are uh, on the list of those eligible to nominate and run. Tracy, anything you want to add there and then uh, anything from the technical community or TSC around this? Todd, yeah, can you... So I'll add... Oh, I'm sorry, Todd. Uh, Tracy, rather. Todd, could you just remind people what the criteria was to get on the list? Yep. Um, so it's detailed out in the charter. So essentially, um, 
the contributors or maintainer, and anyone that's a contributor or maintainer, so the charter defines contributor as anyone in the technical community that contributes code documentation or tech, other technical artifacts uh, into the code base, code bases, uh, and maintainers are uh, contributors that have the ability to commit code and contributions to a project's main branch on a Hyperledger project. Uh, and then, so that's how the, the TSC defines them. Yeah, and then more specifically, um, the contributors are only for the last 12 months, right? So the last year. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then the other thing that I'll add is just a, a call to um, also check the emails. Um, there were some duplicate email, um, so people submitting probably from different machines with different email addresses. Uh, I think there's still three out there now. I got one response this morning. Um, so three out there who are duplicates um, that need to respond with which email they prefer. And then I believe there's three that were no replies. So they had set up their GitHub so that uh, people couldn't see their email addresses. Um, so those people will obviously not be able to receive an email at the no reply email address. So um, yeah, I think that's, that's really it. So uh, basically the process was to pull uh, from the Git logs for the last year, um, since August 1st, I believe is what I chose. And um, so it's all an automated process now. Hey, Tracy, have you um, fed that results into an author's file or like update the author's file if we, if we have one or create one if we don't? Um, I have not, although we can if, if, uh, if we do. I'm not even sure that any of the um, projects currently have an author's file, but uh, I can go check that, day. I'm just thinking it, it might be helpful for DCO purposes, too, um, to maintain an author's file. Does that need to be per project, though? Yeah, it would be per project. For sure. Per, per repo, I assume, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. So I, I mean, I have all the information because it's part of the, the script is to go through and uh, pull that for each of the repos. So um, it wouldn't be hard to do if we uh, do would if we would like to do that. I see Vipin has a couple questions. Uh, Vipin, for the, the first question, uh, the, the TSC term was for one year. Uh, the second question, the uh, active work group members. Um, so that was an exception to the way that the charter was written. That was an exception that the TSC approved last year. Uh, I think there are a couple factors in that one. Uh, th the main one was that the technical community was still relatively small at that point. Uh, so it was just providing a slightly larger pool of folks eligible to nominate. Um, where we're looking at things right now, it looks already like in excess of 300 uh, people that are eligible to nominate. Any other questions, comments, thoughts on uh, TSC annual election? And we will review this uh, each week and just remind everyone to um, check the list, make sure you're on there, make sure your uh, data is all accurate. So, so Vipin, the question about eligible if you do not check in code. Um, so all of the um, contributors definitely came from checking in code. Uh, there are a few maintainers out there who have not checked in code, but are still considered maintainers. And so um, because of the way the charter is written, those maintainers would also have a vote. Well, honestly, it's not difficult to check in code. There's so much to do. Uh, we can just find something for the formality. If that's what you want, we can tick a box. It's, it's very, we have so many things that you can just pick up and, yeah, if that helps. <clears throat> All right. Any other questions? If not, I think we can move on. All right.
right. Uh, so this one is really just a reminder. Uh, I'll drop the most recent thread into the chat window. Um, but a reminder to have a have a read through Tracy's email. Um, and if you have any feedback, please send that over the mailing list uh, to get factored in. And we'll bring uh, somewhat more of a formal proposal back next week. Um, Tracy, anything you want to add there or kind of any reminders? Uh, no, uh, I think, you know, the, the last uh, thread that I had, uh, the question to TSC members was really what information outside of automated metrics would be useful for you to understand the current health, strength, and diversity of projects? So that's really the only question I'm asking is uh, really to get your feedback so that we can um, either add things to the, the template or remove things from the template if, if that's uh, necessary. Wasn't the uh, frequency also a discussion topic? Uh, so we did talk about the, the frequency uh, last week, but we did not come to any um, conclusion on that because it was more uh, focused on, you know, what is the information that we need, so. Okay. All right, well, and I would encourage people to pile on that thread and then we'll uh, pick it up hopefully next week and uh, get it approved. Um, all right, and then finally we have the Fabric Explorer uh, Explorer proposal. My my mouth is still on vacation. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. All right, are uh, Robert Fung or Daniel Wu on the line? Uh, so we traded emails with them late last night. Uh, Robert yeah. or Daniel? <clears throat> so if, if, if I'm not, I'm, go I'm ahead, not sure this was ready for for final, I'm not sure this was ready for final, uh, you know, approval, anyways. Um, but I think it's probably worth starting the conversation and just to say, um, you know, I, I, I was I was curious as to why this was presented as a separate proposal rather than working this through the uh, existing Hyperledger Explorer team. Um, I don't know if it was a, a reboot, you know, a new code base, um, and if so, how we might want to reconcile that. I kind of feel like maybe the two teams should work together. I'm not sure. What it, uh, am I, I feel a little out of the dark on this, so I was wondering if anyone had some light that they could shed on it. This is Murali from, from DDCC. We had the same thought too. So Parda is on the line too. But, uh, you know, Parda and team from DDCC, they're working on the Explorer. So we can work with the uh, Fabric Explorer team. Right. Or they, I, or I, they I, can work with us. Yeah, so the way that it came to me, um, Murali, is that, um, you know, they said they had this thing because they looked at Explorer, you know, the Blockchain Explorer project and um, and that wasn't uh, updated for, for 1.0 and they wanted something. And so they started a project last month to develop something that could work with version 1.0 of Fabric. Um, I suggested that they approach uh, Parta and, and uh, the other maintainers of the Explorer project because I mean, it may be that, you know, we can start sort of new uh, or, you know, that they could have a discussion about whether there should be a separate project. But that's essentially uh, exactly what I was kind of hoping would happen is that there would be a conversation um, amongst the maintainers of the Explorer project and this new proposal so that we can either come to agreement that we need, you know, to uh, have separate projects or come to some sort of consensus agreement about how we can incorporate this new code into the uh, existing code base or, or, you know, whatever the decision was, but it just seemed that Explorer was not, um, uh, you know, again, to these maintainers, it, it, I should say to these guys that are proposing, it seemed like uh, the Explorer wasn't being actively uh, worked on it. So they were looking for another answer. So, um, 
uh, you know, without them on the call, I guess it's a little bit hard to have that conversation. But I, I would encourage maybe email um, conversation uh, over the proposal, you know, link about, you know, how we might want to move this forward. Are we sure nobody is on the call, actually? I think we asked multiple times. We can ask again. Yeah, so it's uh, Robert Fung and Daniel Wu. Are the, you here? All right. Yeah, sorry. That's OK. I just It's always odd, right? If we start talking about people when they're actually sitting there trying to speak up. <laughs> Looking for the unmute button. <laughs> exactly. But I, I also felt it was a bit weird. I tried, Chris was on vacation, he passed it on to me. I tried to give them some guidance and I wasn't completely sure what the proper way was for, I mean, in terms of like, you know, the process, because they actually did two things. I don't know if you guys saw that. They also opened a JIRA ticket against Explorer, where they essentially said, hey, we have new code we'd like to contribute. And it's like, they point to their GitHub repo and say, just it's there <laughs> and you should replace what you have by that that's kind of what this, this implies and so but i wasn't sure in terms of the process whether you know because it's if they, we were to switch over like this does that imply any kind of tsc approval or is it left to the project itself to decide if they want to adopt this new code base in a way, the project itself already exists. If the maintainers of the Blockchain Explorer decides to switch over to the new code, that's entirely their prerogative, right? I don't know that the TSC has to say anything to that. Hi, can you, can you, can you guys hear me? This is Parva. Yep, I can hear you. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, yeah. We, so I just actually joined, so I I couldn't follow the discussion before. So we would love to work with the with the guys um, who developed the Fabric Explorer. Uh, we're happy to actually see see that it's um, we have the Explorer that's ready for that work that can work with the Fabric version one. We had a little bit of uh, churn for the last um, in the recent times and um, and a little bit slow to make the progress. So we are really happy um, to collaborate with. Um, uh, with the new team. So as a next step, uh, should I connect kind of the two threads together, uh, the kind of the Hyperledger Explorer maintainers and um, the, the folks who are specifically looking to propose this code, would that help? I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? Yeah, would would you like me to connect on a email thread um, the the folks who submitted the uh, Explorer and um, the Fabric Explorer proposal and the Hyperledger Explorer team? Or does the Hyperledger Explorer maintainers want to reach out uh, via the, the proposal to the, the Fabric Explorer folks? So we'll, we will reach out, uh, DDCC will reach out too, but you know, if you guys can try from your behalf too, that'll also be great. But we'll try to reach out, they can reach out to us, if you guys can yeah. reach out to that'll help. That's so I, I put in the chat the link to the Jira item they opened, in case you haven't seen it. And that's an easy way to communicate with them, I suppose. <clears throat> All right. Well, I, I think, Tracy, having you sort of help coordinate between DTCC and others that are containers of Explorer and beyond them, this, uh, this new team for blockchain would be uh, helpful. Hey, Chris, you're, fed, you're faded or we can't hear you. I, I was saying that anything Tracy can do to help pull these two teams together would be very welcome. Yeah. 
Wait, I'm in totally that. Hear you. <laughs> I will do that. Awesome. Okay. So I'll start the communication, Tracy, and I'll keep CC also. That way, we basically we're all on the same page. Okay. So again, I mean, Chris. So that means, from a TSC point of view, we're done, right? We basically leave it to the to the team to figure out what to how to leverage this code. Yeah, I, this is Brian. I'd say, I mean, I, I don't know that we need to formally, you know, reject the proposal. My hope is, you know, the teams talk, and then the uh, the the <clears throat> new Explorer proposal team uh, just says, "Oh, okay, we'll work with the existing Explorer team and withdraw the proposal." That's probably the most graceful way to to see it handled. Okay. Um, then I would suggest that we're at end of job. Hey, hey Chris, I, I have one. Hey, Chris, I have one comment. So, and and this is a follow up to Vipin's thing. And I see that the many of the work group members are not listed in that uh, in that contribution list. So, uh, you know, it's just a. I think if you have to consider the 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 health of the work groups, you know that that you should take into consideration if uh, you know the work groups need to be continued or, I, you know, I, I I think this one caught everybody by surprise that the work group members are not part of the contribution contributors list, right? So so just want to throw it out in terms of the the health of the work groups itself right now, and. Uh, and I think the the fact that they're not eligible in the in, in the contribution is sort of a, a short term notice. So, um, you know, as as Todd mentioned, what we did last year was include the work groups as a means of expanding the size of the community. Um, I do agree that the work groups are important. Um, we were fairly lax though last year in collecting the names because we basically said anybody who was considered to be quote unquote on the working group listed in the wiki um, would be included. Um, I think what we're looking for though is active measurable contribution. Now, you know, with code that's pretty straightforward. It all goes into GitHub or Garrett and you can track emails and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, you know, for a work group, there are obviously people that are editing and contributing through the mailing list discussions and so forth. I just, I, I'd be worried about just including people that happen to join a call. Um, that's not contribute. That's not a contribution. That's just eavesdropping. So, you know, certainly I'd be open to having a discussion in the TSC about expanding it to include active and by active something that we can measure, you know, through, um, you know, that they contributed to the editing of a Google Doc or, uh, you know, for like the the, require, the, uh, the white paper or the requirements um, uh, or presented at, you know, the identity work group and so forth uh, and architecture working groups. Um, uh, but I would I would hope that we would maybe come to agreement that it would be something that was active as opposed to passive, if that makes sense. I don't know, Brian, what, what are your thoughts? Nothing to add. I, I feel the same way. Uh, being able to measure that kind of contribution is harder than measuring, you know, commits into it, a repo. But um, it, yeah, I'm open to it. Uh, just uh, we need, I want to make sure that we try to retain the, the duocracy side of the project yeah. as the basis for voting the TSC. I would agree with I, that. I, I guess I have a philosophical disconnect here. Um, for a technical steering committee, you know, I view the working groups as sort of out there setting some of the direction and steering things and contributors are the people implementing. Um, 
you know, a lot of times what comes out of the technical steering committees, and maybe I just am not viewing it correctly. No, I, Mark, I, I think I think yes, you're right. I, what I'm saying though is active, right? But when I say contribution, I'm not necessarily saying code, right? Uh, again, contribution could be documentation and so forth. But um, uh, in in the context of the working groups, I think what I was trying to say was people that are actively contributing to the forward movement of a working group, right? You know, people that are actually providing content into the white paper. People that are providing active contribution into your work group, for instance, that and by that I mean that there, there's, you know, as Brian said, it's a democracy. People that are doing things, not just people that happen to dial into a call. That's not doing anything. That that that's the distinction I'm trying to draw. Okay. Yeah, and, and I agree with that. I just and you know it, it's harder to measure, and maybe we need to work on a way to measure that for. Yeah. And I think, and, and, and Todd, remind me, but I think last year we sort of left it to the work group chairs to decide who contributed. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's accurate. So, you know, okay. look, I, I mean, I, I would be, it would have to be a charter thing if we wanted to make this thing permanent, but I, I'd be willing to entertain a proposal from somebody to expand the list to work group active participation and you know, if we can find some measurable yardstick that we can use to decide whether something was active versus passive, that would be ideal. Um, okay. We also have staff now, and so I guess the other thing we could do is we could ask Tracy to maybe look at the mailing lists and the Google Docs and see if there's a way of identifying who's actively contributed to a couple, couple of comments on this, uh, Chris. A couple of comments. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, in. Um, when I look at the contributors and maintainers uh, that Tracy has created, they are all um, specific to specific projects. So there is no heading for anything that is a uh, supra project, meaning, uh, like, for example, uh, if you have been a member of the TSC who never checked in a single uh, bit of code but participated heavily, uh, your name would not be there. Um, or any of the working groups guys. I mean, there there is no place here for anything that is not project specific. At least I don't see it um, because everything is like Iroha, composer, cello, you know, so on and so forth. So, so there's that. A second, the working groups. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Vipin. Uh, the second point is that uh, you're worried about free riders, I understand, you know. But free riders can uh, be even in code, because if you check in two lines of code and hence you become eligible, uh, it is, you know, so what, what are you, you know, how are you going to measure that? Uh, um, I, I do agree with you that people who are just calling in do not deserve to be uh, uh, among the list of contributors. But if they do contribute, and that too frequently, uh, then they do uh, need to be on the, on the list because the spirit of the charter is for contribution. And the measurement method that you've chosen is to look at the GitHub repo and uh, um, see the people who have checked check stuff in which is which is fine i mean but then uh you know if you if you think that that doesn't completely capture the real contributors to this project uh, then you have to think about how you would include them because otherwise it wouldn't well you know I, otherwise it wouldn't be fair yeah so 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 Vipin, I, I hear what you're saying and yes there are people on this list that tracy's like uh, you know, pulled together that, you know, basically spell check the comment, right? I mean, there's some of that. Uh, the reality of it is, though, is that even that is a contribution. I mean, it, it improves the quality of the, the code base, and, and that's important. I would also highlight the fact that there's absolutely nothing stopping anybody from doing just that. And you know, in fact, you know, this is not an uncommon thing in other, other open source initiatives like OpenStack, I can say, with um, 
authority that that happens a lot. But the reality of it is, is that it, even if you're doing nothing more than spell checking and correcting a typo in a comment someplace uh, or in documentation, uh, it still needs to go through the process of you know, submit a Garrett change or you know a GitHub change, and you um, uh, open an issue and you work it through the whole sausage grinder and get it reviewed and approved and so forth. It's still a contribution. So, um, you know, I, look, I, I I agree that you know we should find a way that we can again uh, incorporate you know include those of us who are. Uh, contributing uh, meaningfully through the or the higher level, the supra, you know, sort of project level stuff that you talked about. And I totally agree. I I do think though that um, again, it's not like there isn't an opportunity for everybody to go in and do just what I said. You know, just go through and spell check something. It's still yeah, but Trace. Uh, I wonder, I mean, is that really valuable, though? I mean, I don't think, I, I, I actually think VP in Brazil. Arno, Arno, whether it's valuable or not is not the question at hand here. If somebody cares enough that they want to be able to vote, then they can do that, is all I'm saying. Yeah, but the, you're forcing some fake, you know, activity, basically, just... No, I'm not. That, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that, Arno. I, I don't agree with that at all. I mean, I think, you know, somebody could have been working qualitatively on... look at all the different changes in, in Garrett or GitHub and say that this one is meaningful and this one is not. Really? We're going to do that? No, but I think we're we we getting lost in the weeds here. Uh, at uh, the same time, uh, the, yeah, hold on, hold on. the vote hold on in the second. end will, you know, will be the selector, right? I oh. mean, if, if all you do is you know, do some kind of crappy com uh, comment uh, uh, check-in just to be on the list, and nobody else knows you, you don't really contribute, you're not going to be voted in. The vote is going to be the key factor. So yeah. from that point of view, I feel like, you know, maybe we are being too strict and just, you know, selecting based on repo contributions. Because if somebody uh, like hold on, crazy hold on, has made a huge amount of work on the wiki, if you were somebody who does that, it's real contribution and you would not appear on the list. It, I, did, did the login incorporated in the? I thought Tracy did it too. So, so it does not. Talking. Yeah, it does not include wiki. Um, no. but yeah, Vipin is trying to get in here. So, hold, hold on a second. Um, uh, the main thing is not whether somebody who's uh, put in a comment gets into the contribution list, but whether somebody who has really contributed is not in the list. Okay, like for example. I'm not in the list, all right? I'm not in the list uh, either. But, uh, you know, um, I've participated in so many calls, yeah. and I've been the chair of the identity working group for eight or nine months, and I'm not in the list. And if you tell me that that is not enough, that I have to go in and check in some comment in order to be on the list, I, I, I mean, I don't frankly want to want to do that, you know? I understand that. Uh, it's, uh, it's, including Mick. Mick is saying that he's not on the list either. And and my and in my case, um, I hand algorithms and documents off to the rest of the Intel team, and they do all of the check-ins for the stuff that I'm doing. So, um, you know, I'm not going to get credit for it. This is Leonard um, for Game Head. <laughs> but luckily, I think really so many contributors to this project because if you look at who are, who are actively collaborating, you have the architectural teams, including Vipin, RAM, you have the TSC, people with governance, etc. Um, you have strategy and direction. Well, of course, that includes Brian, but certainly the TSC and the issues that have to be addressed. So, literally, when you look at um, active contributors, it's really all of us who collaborate on these calls on a, on a, you might say, a measured frequency that we're always there, we're always providing support, we're always looking for best practices, best ways, strategy, direction to move the entire project forward. It's never just down to code and the maintainers and who checks in a piece of code. It's much bigger than that. And therefore, all credibility is based on the entire team of collaborators. So it has to be done 
by consensus. We have to stay around ourselves, Pippin and others, maybe even myself sometimes, are active contributors, and we should be on the list. And that's how, from an open source perspective, we mark the no. level of our, you might say, maturity on that project and, and give, um, you might say, uh, support to all of us who are, who are leading contributors. Thanks. So I will reiterate what I said before. I would be happy to entertain a proposal. I mean, somebody has to go back and actually come up with a proposal. I'm not saying, nobody is saying that we don't want to count those people that are contributing in ways that aren't measurable necessarily by virtue of code. So I think I just want to sort of put, you know, nip that in the bud because that is not what's going on here. However, there are, there is a charter. The charter has been written down for a year and a half or more. And, you know, it, it shouldn't be a surprise. Now, again, last year we did some things and we explicitly approved a, pro a proposal that, you know, expanded the list. And we could do that again. And I'm asking for a proposal. Not now, because I think it needs to be written down and thought about. And I'm sure that we can all come to a consensus agreement that this is something we should do. So. I don't think that arguing about it is really going to help us here, is all I'm saying. I'm just, I'm saying, I think we should entertain a proposal. Brian seemed to be open to that as well. So that's where I would suggest that we are, is that we look for somebody to come up with a proposal. Now, I'm happy to sort of, you know, if somebody wants to step up and say, hey, I'll do that, I'd love to hear that. And I think we can use this time to brainstorm a little bit on this. Uh, uh, so I think I'm I'm completely comfortable with the conversation uh, to date. Uh, you know, the the voices have been um, kind of raised on on some of these ideas. Um, I might suggest that the simplest way to do this is to say any any chartered working group, the um, leader of that working group, uh, or leadership somehow we want to define that. Um, I you know may submit a list of names of those who have contributed to that project in some substantive way uh, to be considered you know for inclusion in the vote for the TSC um, and you know that that seems that seems like the simplest way of making sure that you know the non-technical contributions that are harder to algorithmically determine um, get measured I would get, get accounted also, for and included yeah I would also like to suggest that 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 super project um, that the Vipin was talking about that we probably could do something there with the the working groups right uh, where we do have um, output from those working groups because ide ideally that's what working groups are intended to do right is to generate some sort of either white paper or architecture documents or, or those sorts of things um, that those really should be checked in somewhere right visible for anybody to see and could be then part of that uh, you know who is a contributor right because I, I mean i completely agree that there's uh, you know the the leaders of these working groups are uh contributing right it's just um that sometimes it's hard to see that unless we have some place to go look and so um is there a place that we can create for um the working groups to really you know generate their output Yes, uh, Tracy, uh, this is why I was saying that it's an operational issue because by uh, custom, we have uh, put the documents in, uh, in uh, Google Docs for collaboration. Uh, it is, um, and that's how people collaborate, not by checking in and checking out uh, documents from GitHub, at least so far in most of the working groups that I, uh, I've been involved in. I don't know whether any other working group has done the GitHub check-in, check-out uh, process. Um, so, you know, it's that's why I'm saying it is an. Uh, uh, this is a hidden uh, bunch of contributors. I am with you in that uh, that it should be really the people who really contributed, not just some uh, random people who showed up to uh, uh, you know to a call once in a while. That's not what we are talking about here. Uh, so the uh, looks like the two proposals out here are one is, um, you know, that we allow the working group leads and project maintainers to 
uh, contribute additional names. And the other is to uh, move some of those documents into into GitHub and actually check them in. So, and then, it, 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 but it, it's not it's not GitHub. It's measurable. That's the key thing. If you if you collaborate around a Google Doc, the entire history is there, and you should be able to see who that was, unless they logged in as anonymous. So then the process should be changed of measuring who the contributors are. Uh, it should look at the uh, Google Docs that belong to the working groups to see can, who are the people who have actually. Um, we, we cannot uh, change that. That's a board thing. We can make a proposal that is taken up to the board to make that change. Is all I'm saying. So I, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing, but I think we have to be cognizant of the fact that we can't just change the rules. We can we can expand it again on a one time basis, and we can ask the board to address this as a charter change. But it's in the charter. So we'll go okay, off and work uh, on get we'll go off and work on yeah. uh, writing up a proposal. Um, right. So who who wants to take the lead on this? Uh, this is Brian. I'll I'll, I'll put something simple uh, out on the list, um, and I would certainly welcome others to uh, comment on that and feedback. And then um, it might be something. So our next governing board meeting is Monday. Um, so if we were to get a change to the charter, we'd have to try to get that by email consent um, in time for the vote uh, coming up. So um, let me look and see what could be done within the charter, but but you know perhaps a more expansive view just for that list, so it wouldn't require a charter amendment. Um, but I, uh, we'll look at that on our side. But meanwhile, um, I'm happy to post a proposed modification and don't want to keep others from you know, doing the same thing on the TSC mailing list. And then we'll see if we can converge on that list on a, on a, on a particular proposal that we all like. As we uh, think about proposals, um, just keep in mind that if we can automate the proposal, it's so much better than having to manually um, have to get the information. So um, just think through um, your proposal and see if it meets those criteria. Um, if not, is there a way for it to? By the way, maybe maybe not fully automated, but maybe another thing that may be helpful. If somebody wants to put his name forward, they can actively, if he's not already, he or she are not already in the list, maybe they can just point to the shared document that they already have and we just tick that box. Uh, I, I know it's, it's semi-automatic, but I don't know if we're going to write VBA scripts now to go through Google Docs or something. I don't know if it's going to be helpful. Just saying. Yeah, it's probably a handful of people, right? And we know who contributed anyway, from MIG to, 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 to so many others. Not, not even a, leading of, a leader of a working group, but there are some active participants that we probably want to put in them forward and are not on the call now. Just, just saying. All right. So I think we have a plan. Great. All right. So let's let's do that, and then hopefully we can have quorum next week if we're going to vote on something that expands within the content, you know, within the uh, within the charter. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right, well, everybody gets uh, 10 minutes back. All right, thanks, Thank everyone. you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Okay, Have fun. Bye.